Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Well, what we know is that Stephen Wolfe, a strong candidate for the leadership of UKIP, was hospitalised after some kind of fracas with a colleague in his own party at the European Parliament. The lack of a clear account of precisely what happened means that the broad word altercation has been much used today. Mr Wolfe appears to be doing OK, although he remains under observation in hospital, and it did at one point look as though he might have bleeding on the brain. But what does the incident say about the state of UKIP? Stephen Wolfe's wounds were not self-inflicted, but the party's turmoil is. It is faction-ridden and dysfunctionally split. We'll talk more about the party soon, but John Sweeney is with us live from Strasbourg. John, a very good evening. So, Punch and Judy came to the European Parliament today. Down on the ground, Stephen Wolfe, a rising star in UKIP, and he's recovering tonight in the hospital behind me. The alleged other party, Mike Hookham, also a Euro MEP for UKIP. Now, his people are saying he did nothing wrong today. You get the same story from Stephen Wolfe's people. He's the innocent party. He hit no one. Together, the two narratives do not make sense. Nigel Farage has said he's not expecting any formal complaint to be made. Perhaps UKIP are hoping this whole story will go away. Fat chance of that. Lying out cold on the floor of the European Parliament building in Strasbourg is Stephen Wolfe, MEP, once tipped as a future leader of UKIP. This morning, after falling unconscious, he was taken to hospital, his condition then described as serious. In the last few days, Wolfe has been talking about quitting UKIP to join the Tories. Earlier today, he was alleged to have had an argument with this man, Mike Hookham, UKIP's defence spokesman. The men allegedly clashed at a private party meeting held to clear the air. Word is that in the UKIP meeting in the European Parliament building here in Strasbourg behind me, Hookham and Wolfe fell out. There was talk of settling this outside and the two men left the room. An altercation followed. So who threw the first punch? Now that's a good question. Word is that in the meeting, Hookham and Wolfe fell out. This is Neil Hamilton's take. He's the UKIP leader in Wales. I understand there was an argument between uh, some MEPs and Stephen, uh, I think, picked a fight with one of them and uh, uh, came off worst. But, you know, that's what I've heard secondhand. Um, and uh, it remains to be seen you know, what the full truth is. I, I was told that uh, he was knocked over, hit his head on a window, and uh, I don't know that he was knocked unconscious, but uh, it's obviously had uh, some repercussions. To add to the chaos, these comments attracted fury from UKIP donor Aaron Banks. On Twitter, he signalled his anger at Hamilton's remarks and threatened to leave the party. It's not even 100% clear whether any punches were thrown, but today Nigel Farage confirmed that it had got physical. It's two grown men getting involved in an altercation. Uh, it's not very seemly behaviour. We're talking about, uh, you know, a dispute uh, that finished up physically. Yeah. What is certain is that shortly after the row, Wolf collapsed and was rushed to hospital, where he underwent a brain scan. Thankfully, the results were good and Wolf is now sitting up and expects to be released from hospital tomorrow. So what's Mike Hookham's side of the story? Today, his spokesman told Newsnight that he was unavailable for comment. Which is not the Mike Hookham I know. I met him this June in Strasbourg, shortly before the Brexit vote. This is not the first time that passions inside UKIP have run high, but it's the first time we know about that someone's ended up in hospital. Scenes of MPs throwing punches is something that happens to other nations. Not until today to British parliamentarians. Well, of course there are going to be different philosophical outlooks within a party. They're going to be people who simply cannot get on with each other because of personality differences. 
and of course there are people who are socially liberal and socially conservative. So there's all of that. It's a, it's a broad church and all these people gather under that broad church's roof and of course it's inevitable at times there will be sources of friction. UKIP has made the political weather in Britain and Europe these past few years. Tonight its very own version of It's a Knockout makes it look more than a little foolish. John Sweeney there. Well, Alexandra Phillips was UKIP's head of media for three years until she chose to defect to the Tories. I spoke to her earlier. I asked if she was surprised by today's event. I think anyone would be surprised to learn that, you know, that it actually resulted in fisticuffs and someone had to be conveyed to hospital. Am I surprised that tempers could flare that high? No. There, there have been huge divisions in, in UKIP for almost a year. It's become really, a, you know, a a, a simmering pressure cooker of tempers and ideas and ideologies um, and it was going to go bang it was always going to go bang and in the great divide in the party between Douglas Carswell and some of his acolytes and Nigel Farage and some of his Stephen Wolfe and his alleged attacker, aren't they all on the same side in that, in that particular division? No one's on any side unless you draw it as a Venn diagram and then your enemy's enemy becomes your friend. Um, look, I think the real reason is UKIP is essentially a people's army, is what Nigel would call it. It's a very sort of amateur political party and by that I mean a couple of years ago most of these MEPs hadn't been in politics. They were ordinary men and women doing different jobs, united around a religion, and that religion was Brexit. So fast forward the clock two years, and they thought they had longevity in their political careers, but they voted themselves out of jobs. So they're looking down the barrel at unemployment. And the whole thing, the raison d'etre, the whole cause that united them has also been taken away. And so you've got this peculiar situation where there isn't really much of a hierarchy. There's not much of a threat in terms of whipping people, because you can't turn around and say to someone in UK, you won't be reselected for your seat and you know everyone's trying to jostle for position and determine which way the party should go and it feels very high stakes for those involved I mean some people would say that is a party that by its nature would attract people with a slightly oddball or an extreme personality. Is that, is that fair? No, that's not fair, but what I do think is a shame is actually people who have said that in the past and labelled UKIP, uh, you know, for instance, as fruitcakes and lunatics, are going to feel somewhat vindicated now because of what's happened. Do you think it'll exist in a year's time, this party? No. I personally don't, um, uh, mainly because they don't have any particular direction. Um, the other particular policies that they would have campaigned on post-Brexit were selective education and fracking. Both of those things in, in very recent news are, are now going to be put towards Parliament. Um, so they've really got to come up with a whole new cause célébré uh, that they can back, that they can really push with conviction. <clears throat> and they need a strong leader to do that. Alexandra Phillips, thank you very much. My pleasure. Well, joining us from Birmingham is UKIP's chairman, Paul Oakden. A very good evening to you. Do you know what happened today, Mr Oakden? No, I don't yet, Evan, but I'm in the process of trying to find out. Have you spoken to the participants in whatever happened today? I haven't. I've spoken to our party leader and we've agreed that there will be an investigation into the events of this morning. But understandably today, as Nigel has already outlined, our thoughts are with Stephen and his health. The priority right now is making sure that Stephen recovers quickly. Once we start to get into the coming days, I'm sure that there will be plenty of time to talk to people that were involved and find out the exact detail of what took place. Well, I'm sure everyone will agree with you that it's, it's mostly about Stephen Wolfe's health today. But it'll, I do want to talk about the health of the party. I mean, would you agree with Alex, uh, uh, Alexandra there that uh, this gives credence to those who say your party is full of fruitcakes or loonies? No, no, I wouldn't actually. You know, we've got to put this into context. The big concern today, as you've said, and as I agree, is the health of Stephen Wolfe. But this is two individuals in a party whose membership is in the thousands. They're two significant uh, individuals, admittedly. But still, the party is far bigger than any one individual. That's something that we've demonstrated, particularly over these last few months. And whilst today's uh, events were unfortunate, they don't characterise or define the party in any way. We're right now focused very much on uh, putting forward the process to select our new leader. That's the priority. We will get to the bottom of what happened this morning and, if necessary, take appropriate action. But this is two individuals that clearly got carried away. To what extent that happened, we don't yet know, but we will find out. Right. Uh, just tell me this. If it turned out, as some reports have said, and there are lots of conflicting reports, if it turns out that Stephen Wolfe in some way started this by saying, I'll see you outside, or words to that effect, 
Um, would that be compatible with him being leader? Because basically he is favourite to be leader of the party now that Diane James has stepped down. Well, uh, uh, just on that last point, I don't think it's, it's uh, correct to say that anybody's a favourite when we don't know who the candidates are. Also, I think it would be completely inappropriate for me as somebody who is going to look to investigate this incident to sit here and, uh, and give a hypothetical situation, a hypothetical result of what might happen if it's found out that somebody has done something wrong. Uh, I haven't really started the investigation yet. As I say, my focus is elsewhere, and that's on Stephen Wolf's health. Once we move on to looking at the details, it will be at the end of that investigation that we make a determination on the appropriate conduct of but members. Mr Oakden, it is not possible, surely, for UKIP to select as a leader in the next three or four months somebody who started a fight in the European Parliament. I mean, you can just say that. That's not about who started it or whether Stephen Wolfe started it or not. As a fact, it is not possible for you to select a leader who's, who started a fight. I think our membership are a very intelligent group of people. They will wait as they do to hear the outcome of the investigation that we will put forward. They will draw the conclusions from that investigation that they will. And being a truly democratic party, which is what we are, they will make a determination on their own without me drawing it for them ahead of time as to whether they're prepared to lend their votes to anybody right. taking those facts into account. Well, I'll take it that you wouldn't oppose him standing as a... As, and you wouldn't oppose a candidate who'd started a fight. But look, let me just what ask... I, no, no, that's what I want to do, Evan, is I want our party now to showcase the breadth and, and, and depth of the talent that we have within our ranks. That is out, uh, for sure going to happen in this leadership contest. I'm not going to speculate on what happened today. Uh, with all due respect, that is what you're asking me to do. I'm not right. going to go there. We're going to investigate it. Yeah. At the end of that investigation, well, we will then draw our conclusions. OK, you want to showcase your talent. I mean, a lot of people would say that you should be embarrassed today. You will remember Nigel Farage went to the, uni the European Parliament a few days after the referendum, and he basically scoffed at them. He said he was laughing now. Do you not think, basically, the rest of the European Parliament and everyone who reads a European newspaper will be laughing at this country because you are our biggest representative party in the European Parliament and you're making a spectacle of yourselves there? Well, well that's if you believe the reports that there was some kind of uh, punch-up. Nobody has confirmed that yet. In fact, your the latest reports Nigel would Farage suggest that... Said there the was latest an reports... Nigel the, Farage said An altercation, there was a... yes. An altercation, Evan, has many definitions. It does not necessarily mean people throwing punches at each other. Uh, and latest reports would suggest that that didn't happen. So if this is just two grown men having an argument in a closed room, that happens across all political parties every day of the week. So this is what I keep saying. We have to find out what happened this morning and then we'll be in a proper position to make a determination. I'm so sorry, we're out of time. But look, you don't get hospitalised after you've had a verbal argument with someone. Someone has been hospitalised today. Are you suggesting that you don't think any violence... Or are you suggesting it was possible that no violence was involved at all? It is very clear that Stephen Wolfe took a fall today. It's very clear that some hours after that he was hospitalised. Our concerns are with him and his health now. It is not clear what caused Stephen Wolfe to have that fall. And until I got that clear in my mind and in the mind of my colleagues, it would be unfair and inappropriate to speculate. Paul Oakden, thanks very much indeed. Thanks. Thank you. I've been